You're definitely known for your ass, yes. obviously. Um, but big butts weren't really like the look when you got into the industry, right? No. So like how were you nervous about that? Did you ever get any kind of flack about like your ass or was it always an asset? <laughs> it's definitely an asset now. But I would say like it really wasn't a thing when I got in the industry and actually coming from the South, like a lot, it just wasn't a thing. Like people really didn't like big butts back then. It's really crazy. I mean, not, I can't say everybody, but a lot of people. And then in the industry, it was more like still blondes and big boobs was mm -hmm. the thing when I got in. I think me and Alexis Texas really set the tone for like Big butt white girls. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> Pogs, as they would say. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, now most of your scenes are... Yes. Like, when was your first scene? Um, I would say probably, like, I was 19 turning 20. Okay. So you'd been in the industry for, like, a little bit before yeah. you did. Yeah, they try and to prolong that as long as they can, yes. but I was, like, all in at that point. <laughs> Had, did you do a lot in your personal life? No, but I had tried it. Okay, and so you knew that it... definitely it... wasn't, like... But right, right, right. I was trying it. So what pushed you to do? I mean, was it like, did you, were you doing like a big showcase? Were you getting a lot of money or? It was definitely more money, but I feel like nobody was really doing. So this is the thing for me. And I feel like it took me far and made my career is like nobody was doing IR and nobody was doing like that, especially mm -hmm. white girls with black guys. So mm -hmm. I found my way. That's something I did in my personal life. So I was like, I took that and kind of ran with it, even though my agents weren't happy about it. Yeah. But I was really successful, and it's pretty much why I'm here. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of wild, right, to look back at those times. I mean, now, it, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. like, the fact that it mm -hmm. was, you know, like, a, a milestone to shoot with, like, a black performer. Yeah. Like, how do you, like, looking at that now and, and where you're then and where you're at now, like, do you have any thoughts about that? I mean, I love to see it how it is now because mm -hmm. I feel like we progressed a lot in that sense, Yeah. You know? Um, But then I just always, like did what I want. Like, I've yeah. always just done what I want. I didn't care, like, the rate. I didn't care, like, what, you know, the mm -hmm. thought of what people were going to think at the time. And so, like, that was the crazy part for me. But I'm glad I did, you know, stick to yourself and, like, what you yeah. feel, you know? But your agent was trying to pull you back from that. Yeah, because for whatever reason, I feel like they try to make it a bigger deal so you can get more money and mm -hmm. all of this. But at the end of the day, like, I just never felt like that was something to get more money for. I got more yeah. money with showcases bookings like doing bigger scenes like gangbangs whatever you know so I didn't look at it like for a skin tone yeah like more money you know yeah yeah I know it's actually um I mean ultimately it's it's totally like racist yeah and it's know? like it's but it was acceptable at the time <laughs> it was which is I just crazy. know I just remember how mad my agent got at me he's like you ruined your career he's like I could have got you so much more money and I was like well I just did what I wanted to honestly. yeah like yeah. I never looked at it when they first asked me do I do IR I'm like what the hell is that like I didn't even consider it IR I didn't yeah. think of it like that so yeah just the thought process I'm glad to see it is where it is now yeah I mean you must also feel like good about your decisions now be like dude I was right all along yeah like, you always do with what you feel is right you know yeah. what I mean and what you want to do like not what other people want you to do yeah so tell me about your first scene what was that like and who was it with um who was my first scene with oh my goodness it's crazy put on the spot there's so many <laughs> <laughs> um I want to say this is gonna sound crazy but I want to say it was either like Shane Diesel or Mandingo like we're one of my first ones so it's two kind of, of like blurry, the biggest in the yeah, industry. Yeah, I know it sounds in extreme. I know, but it was so. Like, I mean, whose decision was that, and how did you feel about that? I think it was definitely like um, Bang Bros' decision, as far as like you know the blacks on blondes is what it was for. So, mm -hmm. um, just for the aesthetic of it. But I tried it because like I was just down at the time, like to do big things, and it's like they actually like push your ego you know, when you can do these things. So mm -hmm. after like I got was getting those boosts, you know, as young, it boosts boost your self-confidence, everything. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to try everything that people weren't doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, So yeah. Shane Diesel was huge. Shorty Mac was huge. Like these guys were all big like challenges, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So that's like where I was at with that. But it was still nervous. I was still scared. <laughs> yeah. How did you prepare for it? Um, I didn't really know as much when I first started. But, I mean, they kind of tell you a little bit here and there, you know. But, basically, I didn't eat. Like, that's the th <laughs> that was the only for sure way I knew I was going to prepare for yeah. it. <laughs> to be totally clear. But that's pretty much, like, all I, I did to pre 
care back then, you know. So what what is your process now? I mean, obviously, you know your body a lot more now. A lot better. I mean, I still don't eat the night before. <laughs> if I eat anything, it's like a banana or something. But and then you just clear. I mean, really, just for me is being in a good headspace before. So it's like the more calm I am. Mm-hmm. Like if I'm stressed, I don't like to shoot on those days because mm-hmm. I just feel like it's it's all muscles. It's all it like, is. I need to be relaxed. Totally. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, absolutely. Um, what is the craziest thing that you've put up your ass for a scene? <laughs> I think we touched on this at a point, but I feel like um, probably like milk enemas, whipped cream cans, and golf balls. Wow. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about how like the milk enema works, because not everybody has seen one of those. No, and it's definitely like a whole niche. I feel like, um, you know, so obviously you would have to super clean out because you don't want chocolate milk. Um, <laughs> But, I don't know why I wasn't <laughs> expecting that. Because it's it's like literally focus on your asshole and like the whipped cream. So it's like there's no room for any anything else, you know. <laughs> but it's crazy how like strategic Jason was like the king of the kings of this stuff back in Evil Angel days. And like mm-hmm. he would cut the whipped cream cans and like kind of like melt the top so it was like smooth. So we can literally just stick it up. You know, oh. and like push it. So then yeah, because they're kind of sharp. Like sharp. It'll cut you. you know? Yeah. Like the skin's thin back there. So he had like the special little way. And then he would, uh, that's how we would get the whipped cream up there. Mm-hmm. But obviously it's still dangerous to put aerosol like yeah. anywhere up there. But you don't think about that. You're young. You're like, right. oh, yeah. okay, this looks cool, you know? And just, I feel like there was like extreme girls back then. So we were all like just down to do like crazy shit. Like, yeah. It was like Amy Brooke. There was just crazy girls and they did way crazier stuff than me. But when I was around girls like that, it would make me, I'll be like, oh, yeah, let me try this. Yeah, up for the challenge. But the whipped cream's crazy. I feel like it's not one of my favorite things to do. And then also we would put milk, like, it would be like rice milk or like soy milk in, like, you would empty an enema and put it in there. And then you would shoot that up there. So you would literally, like, shoot the shoot it back out your ass. It's just yeah. a really, like, <laughs> crazy niche, but it's so... It's crazy. And then your partner would drink it out of your butt, yeah. right? Yeah. Or we would have like, he had like these little like racetrack things. So she would be at the bottom and you would like push it out and it would go down these tracks and just like, like a little hot wheels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just f- crazy. Wow. <laughs> it's crazy now to reminisce on those things because yeah. then when you're in the moment, you don't think of it. You're just like, oh, this is crazy, but not like how it is now. You're like, this really sounds crazy. <laughs> yeah. And those were that was in the early days of the Internet when I think people were pushing the envelope so much because you could because yeah. before you were so restricted by distribution, you know, mm-hmm. um, DVDs could only like certain states where they didn't allow. So like certain DVDs couldn't go to that state. Right. Canada had a lot of restrictions. So it was it was tricky. I know like with magazines, we didn't shoot penetration until the right. internet came along because then it, it pushed that envelope. Mm-hmm. And, and I think once there was this place that you could release content and you kind of had no restrictions because mm-hmm. the distribution was worldwide, people just went crazy. It was like the politics. No, it really is. And I feel like, they, what did they kind of like go back to like, um, what's the word? Not monitoring, but there's still certain things you, you can't do mm-hmm. now. Yeah. Since then, you know? Like Max Hardcore always shot crazy stuff. Like when I was coming into the industry, that was like crazy. And then they were like, oh, no, like you can't shoot stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So Well, it depends. It's because Visa and MasterCard have come down pretty hard on Mm -hmm. um, certain things. You know, they won't process for you. That was because of the scare with the the whole thing that happened. Um, but I think it like it's weird because I guess it like depends on the site because some sites are stricter than others. Mm-hmm. I guess like some sites are more afraid of losing their billing than other ones are. I don't know. It's it's kind of a weird mix. Or bag. different shot maybe in different parts of the world too. I know that like Europe and Budapest always shoot crazier stuff than yeah. they fill here. In yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, my amazing listeners. You know how much I love bringing this podcast to your ears every week. So if you're looking away to support the show and get some fantastic perks, I've got just the thing, my Patreon page. With plans starting at just $5 a month, you can be part of our exclusive community. Your support not only helps to keep this podcast going, but it also unlocks some really cool bonuses. Imagine getting access to the live streams of my interviews as they happen. You'll be right in the middle of the action, seeing all of the unedited moments. But that's not all. As a Patreon member, you'll also get exclusive bonus content. I'm talking extra mini episodes where our guests answer questions submitted by you. 
Plus, you'll have access to my fine art photography and behind the scenes videos, giving you a sneak peek into my creative process. And guess what? If you opt for a discounted year long membership, you'll save even more while supporting the show. Longtime subscribers even get free HRU merchandise as a token of my gratitude. So want to join us? Head over to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered and become a part of our growing community. Your support means the world to me. Let's make this podcast even better.